Thank you all so much for joining us this morning. My name is Debbie Dennis. I'm a senior vice president with Encore. We keep your lights on, hopefully all day today in the rain. Uh, and uh, I am the current chair of the board of the Leadership Dallas Alumni Association. So uh, I'm one of the people here this morning that's uh, going to share information with you about <coughs> Leadership Dallas. All of you all are here, and I apologize for the post, uh, because you're interested in applying. So Leadership Dallas this year is 40 years old. It's been around since 1975, and it's the Chamber's flagship leadership development program. Uh, really, not only does Leadership Dallas provide a pipeline for future leaders for the community, but it's also a great, great way to help people learn more about the city of Dallas or the Dallas area and both the challenges and issues that are facing the city. So it's a great program. I would tell you, hands down, in all of my career, Leadership Dallas is the best leadership program that I ever participated in. And you will get out of it what you put into it. It's an amazing program. So what's involved? So the application process is open now. Applications are due May 8th uh, by the end of business. And it's all online. Uh, most of you have probably been out there and looked at the application and seen it. But it involves uh, certainly the application, an application fee, uh, your uh, bio, also a picture, and up to three references. It's a pretty easy process, uh, but this morning I encourage you, several of the alumni are here to share additional information about what it takes to be a good candidate, what's involved in the program, and we're here to answer your questions. Uh, I think Creighton has to leave pretty quickly for applying. He's going to go next after me. And at the end, uh, I'd ask you to hold your questions till the end, and then there'll be several alumni that will be here to help answer your questions. So I'm going to turn it over to Creighton Witt. Hey everybody, good morning. Good How are morning. you? Welcome to the Mary Kay Building. Uh, my name is Creighton Webb. I'm Vice President of Corporate Communications and Corporate Social Responsibility here at Mary Kay. Everybody found it okay? Yes. Um, so just real, real briefly, a little bit about the building. Um, so this has been Mary Kay's world headquarters since about 1995. Um, our global manufacturing facility is at Regal Row in Stemmons, you know that gold building? And that used to be our world headquarters. And then in the mid-90s, Mary Kay Ash was looking for a larger world headquarters building. So this building had been bit, built in the mid-80s for a savings and loan company that never, ever moved in. Right? So it sat empty for 10 years. And then she came along and found it. It has 13 floors and 13 elevators. And 13 was her lucky number because she founded the company on Friday the 13th of September 1963. Um, and in fact, on the 13th floor, for those of you who've been through Leadership Dallas before and been here, her office is just as she left it. So if you get a chance to check out the Mary Kay Museum before you leave today, it's a pretty, pretty astounding place. Um, and we are really honored to host you all this morning and to have the Dallas Regional Chamber. There's a lot of folks, I just want them to raise your hand. If you're a Leadership Dallas alumni or on the board, would you raise your hand so we can all look, look around. Look at how many folks came this morning because they believe in this program and they got so much out of it. So first, what I want to say is congratulations. You have taken the first step, in, and you may not believe it right now, because so many of you have amazing resumes. You've done incredible things already. You've served your city, your community, you've given back, and you've achieved amazing things in your career. But believe it or not, and I didn't believe it when I was sitting where you were, Leadership Dallas opens a whole new view, a whole new realm of, of opportunity and thoughts. I can tell you, so my background, I, I was a journalist, I covered City Hall, and I worked at City Hall for a time, and then I came to Mary Kay, believe it or not, as a lobbyist. And so when the Leadership Dallas application came, I thought, ha, right, you know, I'm not sure how much about the city I'm really going to learn that I don't already know, but I'll probably make some great contacts. Wow, was I arrogant. Man, did I miss the boat. There was, first of all, I was so lucky to actually get in. When I found out how many applicants there were that year, and that there were only 45 to 55 folks picked. I just thought, wow, this is astounding. I, I can't believe how fortunate that, I'm, that I got in. And then I showed up to orientation, and boy, was it the cock of the walk, right? Everybody walks in with a resume on their sleeve, they're like, look at what I've done, and boy, did I feel even further intimidated. By the end of the year, not only did I learn so much about the city of Dallas and our community, the issues that we face, the problems that we have, 
our history, how much we've accomplished, but how much we have yet to accomplish. I never could have imagined. And even better than that, I made friends, not just contacts, but friends that I will have until the day I die. And there is not one day, I, I, I am not exaggerating, not one day that passes ever since I graduated in June of 2008 until now that I don't interact with someone within the city that has not gone through Leadership Dallas. And not one person have I ever talked to that didn't have an extraordinary experience. So the first thing you need is a true and real passion for the city and for giving back. That you want to be a bigger part of this community, that you want to be part of the solution. Not that you have all the answers, not that you're the smartest person in the room, because wow, will you get humbled quickly. There are so many amazing people who do so many amazing things in our community. Um, first, it is important, this is not a, this is not the entry level, right? This is not the way to decide, okay, now I'm ready to get involved in the community. I need to learn what it means to be a good leader. I need to learn what it means to give back. This is not the entry level. This is for folks who are, have already have an established track record of giving back and serving the community. So that's important to think about in your application. What have you already done to serve on boards, nonprofit organizations, civic organizations, groups that, that in, in the community that are giving back? Second, uh, you need to be accomplished in your career already. That's one of the things that they look for in the application process. And I'm not kidding you. I mean, they, they get anywhere from 150 to 300 applications every year with a class of 45 to 55 people. And they're looking for diversity, not just racial diversity, but background diversity, age diversity, folks who have different perspectives and views on things, but also people who've done different things as well. Next is time. Um, People ask about the time commitment all the time. It, it is significant, but like anything, you get out of it as much as you put into it. So it's the first Friday, and I'm sorry if I'm covering somebody else's, but so I'll, I'll stop there. I'll let them cover that. Right? I have a tendency to do that, right? Leave nothing else for someone else to say at the end. But time is important. Um, so they, they will tell you in a few minutes about what the time commitment is. The fact is, is if you weren't already busy, you wouldn't be here. Right? If, if you weren't already overcommitted, you wouldn't have decided that this might be something for you. So first, if you have a chip on your shoulder about how busy and important you are, knock it off right away, right? Because everybody here is busy and very important, right? So, so you know, just remember you're entering from a, an equal, equal playing field. Uh, recommendations. You need folks who are willing to make really high recommendations for you. That you don't see the recommendations before they're turned in, and they have a chance to check recommend as a courtesy. So if you ask Ron Kirk to be your recommendation, and you met Ambassador Kirk twice at a cocktail party, and he checks recommend as a courtesy, it's probably not going to happen. So remember that. It's important to have diverse recommendations, someone that perhaps you've worked with, someone perhaps that's gone through Leadership Dallas, someone perhaps who knows you from your civic, volunteer, nonprofit work as, as you gave back. There's a couple other things. Finally, I think it's important that you have a passion for our city and a willingness to learn. If you know it already, if you know everything about everything already, you know, what are you really gonna gain out of it? But if you know that I'm gonna go into this and I'm gonna learn about the city and our community, about our needs and our problems. And more than that, I'm gonna learn from other people who have different points of view. Not right or wrong, not, not black or white, not red or blue, right? It's, a, it's about our city, our community, and the tremendous needs that we face. And if you've got an open mind and an open heart, and, and that shows through in the application and your recommendations, I think it's gonna be worth your time and you're gonna get a lot out of it. I, I truly, I say this with great humility, Leadership Dallas changed my life. It, it just, I had been blessed with so many opportunities already and I had no idea after going through Leadership Dallas what it could do for me. And more important, just the people, the, the friendships, the connections and the colleagues. And so now, if I've got a question about hi, how do I tackle this, whether it's at work or in the community, whether it's fundraising for things that you're working on or whether it's just, hey, we've got a problem and I need to get a small group of folks together to help brainstorm on how we're gonna solve it. Leadership Dallas is my network. There is, there is not one that's better and stronger. So congratulations, first of all, for taking a risk because this is a group of people that's not used to being turned down, right? I mean, you're not used to being told no. You're not used to having to apply for anything. You're the folks who people call up and say, hey, 
we got a bunch of applicants for this job, but we want you. Or, hey, we've got a full board, but we're going to add a spot because we want you. I mean, you're the ones. So thank you for taking the risk and being willing to put yourself out there for something that may be, maybe, maybe just a little bit bigger than yourself. So thank you so much for coming today. Thank you for letting Mary Kay host. And I think I've filibustered long enough. So I'm going <laughs> to pass it on to uh, my next colleague. Marissa Fontanez and I am an, and I'm an alum from 2014 and I was just sharing with someone earlier that um, when I came to this information session I came in thinking there I'm not gonna do this this is too much of a commitment I'm just coming because my friend encouraged me to come I am I'm just gonna listen and I'm gonna leave I met one of my future classmates and longtime friends and and I can't emphasize enough Creighton's point that it is definitely a life-changing experience from a personal level, but also from a business level. So thank you again for being here. I have notes because I have lots of details that I need to go over. So it's a 10-month program uh, total. It's a two-day retreat. And then for the next nine months, you have full day, uh, hourly, uh, eight hour sessions. You have monthly preliminary assignments that you'll also hear as homework. Um, and then we also have a class day community project. So you're gonna be exposed to a lot of critical issues that the city is facing via group discussions. I mean, some of the most amazing discussions are within 10 or 15 people and you're sitting down with a very high level executive or city councilman and it's an opportunity that you just can't pass up. Um, and lectures and on-site visits development activities. So some of the issues that are covered are human services, criminal justice, healthcare, education, arts and culture. Um, so what is it gonna take? The commitment that everybody is saying that, here's what it, here's what it is. You have a overnight retreat um, in September. Um, you have every month a full day, when I say full day, I mean from 8 a.m. including until after 5 p.m. Uh, for the networking portion and also just to decipher everything that you've learned throughout the day. So that's once a month. Um, you also have curriculum committees, meetings that you'll have, and then you'll have the homeworks again and the class project that you'll need to do. So while I stress that this is an amazing program, you definitely need to commit yourself because in order to graduate, you do have to fill, fulfill a lot of the attendance requirements. One more thing. <laughs> Oh yes, tuition. Um, it costs $4,500, but if you are a member with the chamber, you do get a discount at $3,300. And there are partial financial assistance available for limited participants. So if you are not a member of the chamber and you're interested, there's a table at the back. Carrie, somebody, Kevin, will be here to, if you have, would like to ask further about that. I'm gonna pass it on to Prentice. So I was caught in the back grabbing coffee, so I'm going to run a few real quick, so excuse me for this. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Prentice Murphy. I uh, lead our marketing efforts at Deloitte here locally. Um, I am also a part of the great class with Marissa 2014, so I'm honored to be here with you. Thank you, Chad. <laughs> honored to be here with you this morning. I hope those details and the specifics of the program didn't frighten you, because what you get out of this program will far exceed what you're putting into the program. Um, I did not necessarily come from the lens of, and the part that I'm supposed to talk about is the value you get for your business and for you personally. When I came to the program, I didn't come through the lens of what I could get from this from the business context. The contacts are kind of inherently a part of the program. You get to meet 50, 55 awesome individuals um, who you build great connection with and it almost kind of feels very fraternity sorority like you know these are the best friends ever and you party with them and you go out to drinks with them and you talk about all the issues that happen within the city that you directly impact but it goes much deeper than that so when i came into the program i wanted to know you know sorry step back i was a consultant for 10 years so although i lived here i didn't live here i collected mail here um, but I still remain active in a number of different organizations. So when I was able to join su such a great program as Leadership Dallas, it was one to better understand what was going on in the city and how I can impact that. 
and that's the lens that I joined the program through. What has happened subsequently is that you are a part of an expensive network. You are a part of some, or have access to individuals that I don't think ordinarily uh, would accept a phone call from. Um, but now that I'm a part of this program, um, it's less than three degrees of separation. Um, in terms of individuals that you can contact, that you can network with, that can help you in, in terms of your professional career. I think that there are, it's not necessarily mutually exclusive in terms of doing well in a business standpoint, but also doing good in the community. I think those things can go hand in hand. So for as a specific example, when we're thinking about and having a conversation about where do we want to invest our corporate dollars in terms of making the biggest impact in the broader community, I say, hey, I have an answer for you on that. And so that gives me an additional seat at the table that maybe I wouldn't have had previously. So those are some of the things that you can think about in terms of what you gain from this program, in terms of the networks that you have, and in terms of just you don't necessarily have to have the answer, but you have within your particular class and the class that preceded you a network of individuals that you can reach out to and contact. Um, that's a very brief and very limited part. I think that you would definitely get a lot more out of the individual one-on-one -on -one conversation, so I don't want to take up too much of the time, but I mean, I, I cannot emphasize the importance and the value that you get from this program, both personally and professionally. Um, my friend always has a little quote, I'm never too busy, um, and while that does work for a real estate <laughs> business, I think that very much really puts in a very good summary of the relationships that you gain through Leadership Ballast. The individuals who have come through this program know that there's only a select group of individuals who actually go through, and no one is ever too busy to take a phone call from. Um, I'm not sure who is next. <laughs> so, that, thanks to my colleagues. One of the things I failed to mention is, uh, as Creighton said, you, you know, there's almost anybody you talk to. Uh, you run into almost daily someone who's graduated from Leadership Dallas. You know, former mayor and uh, U.S. Ambassador Ron Kirk is a graduate. Several of our state rep representatives, like Rafael Anchia, as well as Helen Giddings and Eric Johnson, are graduates. People, business leaders like Tom Baker, Jack Lowe, and many others, and former uh, city manager Mary Soon. So the list goes on and on. And as you all know, uh, I think if, when you go through a program like this, not only do you gain great friends in your class, I would tell you as an alumni who's very active, the network that goes beyond that and the friends I've developed from serving on the board is amazing. Uh, and it's one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about Leadership Dallas and the difference that the people make. One of my classmates, uh, I was in the class of 2009, is Mike Moran. Yes, thank you. Yes. <laughs> and so it's great to see one of our classmates who has really taken to heart and made a reality what Leadership Dallas is about. And it really is about, as was mentioned previously, you all are all very active in the community, but how do you continue to give back and take that further? And that's what this is really about. Now, I would like to, again, thank you all for being here this morning. Thank you in advance. Uh, hopefully we're not scaring you about the commitment. Anything worthwhile takes commitment. Uh, it is a big commitment. Uh, one of my colleagues that went through after me that I had encouraged to apply told me it was a second job uh, while he was doing it. Uh, but he would not take for the experience. So that's, you know, you have to want to do it and you get in out of it what you put into it. Uh, so I'd like to invite my fellow alumni that are here to come up front so that people can easily find you. So if you all would join me, if you're alumni. Uh, several of our board members are here as well today, so thank all of you all. We'll be up here. I want to encourage you to take time, not only to network with each other, but also to come ask questions from some of these people that uh, can give you firsthand uh, their experience and information about the program. So I hope you have a great day. Be safe, and again, stay and visit with these. Uh, we have a great turnout. Thank you, my fellow alumni, for being here this morning. And with that, that concludes the formal part of our program, and we'll get up, network, and give you all a chance to ask questions. Thank you.